Texas Tech men's basketball season is officially here, and the Red Raiders look to take a leap in year number two of the Grant McCaslin era. In today's season preview video, we'll do everything under the sun for Texas Tech men's basketball, including break down the roster, look at the odds for them to win the Big 12, the starting lineup rotation, as well as how far can this Texas Tech team go in March Madness. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And if you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on all things Texas Tech men's basketball all year long. I know we'll probably have a lot of new viewers coming in, but this is the largest Texas Tech YouTube channel there is, not associated with the university. So we're giving you daily videos on everything you need to know Texas Tech, whether it's you know injury-related, recruiting, the metrics. What do they say about Texas Tech men's basketball and much more? So if you want to join the most interactive Texas Tech men's basketball community on YouTube, just follow those three simple steps. Like the video, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. I mentioned a little bit earlier there in that rant and promo. We're interactive here. I want to hear from you guys before we even get into the preview. How far will Texas Tech men's basketball go in the NCAA tournament this year? You think that it's just one and done like they were last year after they lost to the Cinderella of the tournament in the NC State Wolfpack? Maybe they win a game, go to the round of 32, second weekend team, maybe Elite Eight, Final Four. Hey, no wrong answers here. Let me know down on the pinned comment below how far you think Texas Tech men's basketball will go this year in the NCAA tournament. All right, let's jump into the roster here because there's a lot of new faces, but also in the transfer portal world, you bring a really solid nucleus back if you're Texas Tech. And most notably, that starts with D5, Darion Williams, a guy that got snubbed in my estimations last year from an all Big 12 second team. Instead, he was on the third team. He is one of the best players in the Big 12 conference this coming up season. He will be joined alongside his best friend, not my words. Those are his and some of the videos that Texas Tech men's basketball has posted on social media with another returnee and Chance McMillan. You've also got the likes of Kerwin Walton coming back. Devin Cambridge, who is, we've got some really good news on him here in a little bit. And then also a couple other faces in terms of Meli Yalahu and Jack Francis. Now, the newcomers, right? This is where things get interesting in college basketball because college basketball, it feels like you could go out and just get the portal, right? Like you could, you don't even have to high school recruit. And in some regards, that's kind of what Texas Tech has done. But let's look at the new faces. You got JT Toppin, arguably one of the best freshmen this past year in all of college basketball. He led New Mexico in rebounds, offensive rebounds, blocks, and everything under the sun and was the Mountain West freshman of the year. Kind of like D5 was at Nevada the year prior when Texas Tech went to go land him in the portal. You also landed one of my favorite portal targets in KO if you were a subscriber over at the Scarlet and Black Insider, which you should be. There's nobody doing Texas Tech basketball coverage better than SBI with Austin Massey, Jacob Harris, Emory is on board now. I know y'all know Emory if y'all are on Texas Tech Twitter and myself. So be sure to go subscribe to that. I've been talking about KO all offseason. I think he has a chance to really, truly be an impact guy for the Red Raiders. This year, so more off the bench. But long term, I think he could be a true all Big 12 type player. Can KO, I guess the new KO. You got Fetty Squared as well. Federico Federico from Pittsburgh. That will be the starting center more than likely for the Red Raiders. He is the only guy on this team 6'10 or taller. You've also got Elijah Hawkins, arguably the best passer in this past portal cycle from Minnesota, previously from Howard. Before that, he is one of the most electric point guards in the country when it comes to setting up his teammates and getting them in the proper position to succeed. Now, the other guy that is on this roster that I don't think a lot of people have talked about, it will be in a walk-on capacity, is another transfer, is Corbin Green from Air Force. Now, he's from Middle Othean, Texas, is in just a bulldog. I mean, he is built like a bulldog, a tank, whatever frame of reference you need. The boy is thick, no pause, okay? And he's a guy where I don't know exactly kind of the role he's going to play, but he was decent in limited time at Air Force, so it's good to have that kind of depth on your bench as Jess Henderson moves from walk-on status to scholarship, although Jess Henderson Jr. is more than likely out for the season 
due to injury. Now, that's the roster for Texas Tech going into the season. I think there's clear, there's a clear tin. Let's just say that in terms of this is what I think the rotation looks like in my estimation of minutes. Okay. Keyword and phrase, I guess there is my estimation of the minute distribution for the Red Raiders. The starting lineup, this is what I think will go out there against Bethune-Cookman on November 5th. This can change, obviously, and most notably at the two spot. That's where I am the least confident in terms of who is the starter. Everywhere else in the starting five, I feel pretty confident those are going to be the starters. You got Elijah Hawkins. Just talked about him in terms of how great of a passer he is, and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch with a lot of shooting that Texas Tech has on this team. I think he is the starting point guard and probably plays 30-plus minutes, although he is nursing a Liz Frank injury um, or plantar fasciitis, excuse me, on his foot. So there's that. OK, so maybe they limit him in non-con to make sure he's really good to go through this now 20 game gauntlet in the Big 12. Yes, you heard that right. 20 game conference schedule. Unreal. It's literally going to be a battle of nutrition in terms of uh, attrition, I should say, um, for these teams in the Big 12, because it's basically who's going to be healthy enough at the end of the year. Right. So I think Elijah Hawkins plays 30 plus minutes, probably in that 33 range. If I had to guess, I have Kerwin Walton starting now. I think it's interchangeable with the six man that I will talk about here in a little bit. But I have Kerwin Walton starting just from the length perspective. He's gotten better at defense and he's an absolute sniper, arguably the best three point shooter in all of college basketball. That's not hyperbole. There are stats to back that up. Then the aforementioned D5, one of the best players in the Big 12. I think he plays 30 plus minutes, probably closer to that 34, 35 minute range. Does D5 play? And then I haven't really mentioned him outside of really talking about his stats at New Mexico, JT Toppin. We broke the news that he was going to be a Red Raider over on SBI. Another great reason to join the Scarlet and Black Insider when that news broke. Um, but he, in my estimation, was a top 10 at worst overall player in this past portal cycle. He is a guy that truly has the potential alongside D5 to be an all big 12 caliber player. And I'm not talking about on the third team. I'm talking about the second team and a JT really lives up to that potential and the flashes that he's shown um, pretty consistently actually at New Mexico and takes that leap into the Big 12, much like D5 did, there's a chance he's an all Big 12 first teamer. How likely is that? I don't know because this conference is freaking loaded, but he has the potential to do that. He will be the starting four for the Red Raiders. Now, at center, the aforementioned Fetty Squared, Federico Federico, he'll probably play in that 25 to 28 minute range. I think you could see Texas Tech play some small ball this year, specifically with the guy that we're going to talk about here in just a second, back and ready to go with no limitations from the jump. Now, Talked about him in terms of this is the guy I think could probably be your starting two guard. I don't know which way they're going to go in this regard, but it's Chance McMillan, okay? It would not shock me at all if he's the starting two guard for this team at all. Him and Kerwin Walton just switch, and Kerwin goes from the starting lineup to the sixth man and vice versa for Chance, right? It wouldn't shock me at all if that's the case. But I have Chance coming off the bench like he did last year, playing in a similar role except with more minutes. Um, I think he could be in that 25 to 28 minute range and even get higher than that because his scoring is going to be needed. And also, I think he's a better playmaker than he showed last year just because, well, he really didn't need to. What you needed last year from him was being able to shoot the basketball, and he did that at an elite level. The aforementioned Kevin Overton is in that seventh spot. So the second guy off the bench for me, I think he probably plays in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 minutes in the same vein as the guy that I mentioned was going to play for those small ball lineups. Devin Cambridge, he tore his ACL last year, but you saw in limited action, albeit in the non-con slate, what he could do for that small ball lineup that Grant McCaslin loves to run. D5 is a guy that really impacts this team in a multitude of ways on both sides of the floor and really allows people to play to their strengths. And that's really hard to find from a guy that plays in the front court, okay? He will play in that 15 to 20 minute range, if not more. Again, I think they're going to ease him back, although there is no limitations from that ACL injury. He's good to go from the jump, as I previously mentioned. I think he's going to be one of the big key players for the Red Raiders this season, not to mention his experience. I mean, he's a six-year senior. He's played in the NCAA tournament. He's, he's a guy you need to know about for sure. 
the lone freshman I have getting substantial minutes on this team is Christian Anderson. The four-star top 100 recruit from this past cycle was previously committed to Michigan, decommitted after Jawan Howard was fired. Dusty May got the job up there, the Florida Atlantic coach, and Christian Anderson was looking for a new home, and the Red Raiders are happy to have him. He is a guy that I think translates to being a true impact freshman and a guy that can really lead the way for the Red Raiders at the point guard position starting in 2025-2026, but he will play a key role this year and play valuable minutes as a true freshman. The 10th guy on this roster, I think, is Emily Elahu. Um, I think he has grown, like literally he's grown. Um, he's taller than he was last year, which is crazy to say. Um, and I think he'll play some some minutes. I don't, I don't know what exactly that looks like, but I think he'll be that third backup big for the Red Raiders. And I think I uh, have him down right now for six to, my, six to nine minutes per game. Nice little total right there if you take the dash out. But um, I, I think that that's probably where he is more than anything. And I think he's going to be a lot better than he was last year. You could tell last year this is not supposed to be a dig. I know some people will say he looked lost. He looked like a baby giraffe trying to walk for the first time out there. And rightfully so. It's the Big 12 Conference as a true freshman. And you were thrown into a role because of injuries that you were not expecting to play in. I think he's going to be much, much better this year. And I think he'll be the 10th guy on this roster once things shrink down going in to the Big 12 Conference slate. All right. As for the Big 12 regular season winner odds as of November 2nd at the time of this recording, this is from FanDuel. Kansas and Houston are neck and neck at plus 220, plus 230 to win the conference. Then Iowa State at plus 470, Baylor at plus 800, Arizona not too far behind at plus 850. And then there is a massive drop off to where your Red Raiders are slated at plus 1700. So the six best odds to win the Big 12. Um, and I, I, I should have mentioned this when we were going through the roster. Um, the one unique thing as we go into my prediction too, this is kind of intertwined here, about this Texas Tech roster. Everyone on this roster that I think will play valuable minutes outside of Christian Anderson, who is a true freshman, has played in the NCAA tournament. Okay. So you think about that. Elijah Hawkins has played in the NCAA tournament at Howard. Kerwin Walton obviously has played in the NCAA tournament at North Carolina. And then also as a Red Raider, D5 as a Red Raider and as the Wolfpack out at Nevada. JT Toppin as a Lobo at New Mexico. Then you've got Fetty Squared at Pittsburgh. You got Chance McMillan at Grand Canyon and Texas Tech. You go back and you look at KO. He played at Drake, right, in the NCAA tournament. And then you've got Devin Cambridge, both at Auburn and Texas Tech last year, albeit he was injured. He was still there with the team. And then Emily Elahu as well played last year as a true freshman in the NCAA tournament for the Red Raiders against the Wolfpack in that first round matchup. So your total roster in terms of guys that are going to be key contributors from one to 10 on this roster outside of one guy in Christian Anderson, who, oh, by the way, he may not have played in the NCAA tournament. He's won a Euro under 18 world title. I mean, I, I, it, it was wild, and he was the key reason why. He was the leading scorer for Germany as he has dual citizenship, and uh, he was an absolute stud. So there's that. As for my prediction, though, I think this is where I'm at. Do I think Texas Tech will win the Big 12? No, I don't. But I feel like they will finish in the top five. Um, and I know that that might be surprising with that massive gap between them in Arizona at five. Again, plus 850 for Arizona to win the Big 12. That was the fifth best odds in the Big 12. And Texas Tech was six at plus 1700. So we're talking about literally double, right? The odds for Arizona there. The reason being is this. Grant McCasson is a proven winner. Everywhere he goes, he wins. Simple and plain. And he gets the absolute most out of each and every roster he coaches. Period. End of story. Whether it's up in Jonesboro, Arkansas, at Arkansas State, whether it's in Denton at North Texas, or a perfect example was last year for Texas Tech where they battled injuries left and right and they still made the NCAA tournament and still finished top three in the Big 12. This guy is an absolute proven winner at the highest level, and he gets every ounce of talent and every ounce of energy out of his team each and every year. I think he does so this year for Texas Tech, regardless of injuries, right? And in terms of March, I've been saying this since they got JT Toppin out of the portal, since they got Kevin Overton out of the portal, since they got Elijah Hawkins, right? Since they got Christian Anderson, since we knew what this team looked like, 
I think this is a bona fide second weekend team. I think they make the Sweet 16 because in March, what wins you games? Experience and guard play. You have an experienced guard in Elijah Hawkins. You have plenty of senior leadership outside of him, too, in Kerwin Walton. D5 in terms of his level. Yes, I understand he's just a junior, but he's got a great head on his shoulders and is a bona fide star. You've got Chance McMillan, an older guard as well. You've got guys that have played in the tournament, as I mentioned, one through 10, everyone outside of Christian Anderson. And in March, guards win you games. And Texas Tech has a ton of them. And oh, by the way, what also helps you win in March? shooting and Texas Tech has three guys returning on this roster in Kerwin Walton, Chance McMillan and D5 that all shot over 40 percent. You don't think they're going to get better looks with Elijah Hawkins coming in the mix, one of the best passers in the country? You're crazy if you don't think so there. I think Texas Tech goes to the second weekend. They have the shooting, as I mentioned, the spacing and then the depth on this roster to compete at the highest level in the NCAA tournament. And I think they have the coaching staff and the experience, top through bottom, not only on the roster, but the coaching staff to get that done. So in my estimations, I think in year number two of Grant McCaslin, this team has the potential to make the Sweet 16. And that's what I at least expect them to be at um, moving forward. All right. Let me know your thoughts. I gave you my prediction. I think Texas Tech is a second weekend team. And if you know anything about college basketball, as this video runs long, almost 17 minutes, um, if you make it to the second weekend, you have a chance to make the final four. It's really just a bounce here or there has to go your way, right? That's the tournament when it's all said and done. And Texas Tech, I think, has the experience and the talent to make the second weekend. And once you get there, as I just mentioned, anything can happen. All right, let me know how far you think Texas Tech will go in the NCAA tournament this year. Do you think they'll just make it maybe one game in terms of winning it, going to the round of 32, Sweet 16, second weekend, Elite Eight? You think they're going to be playing in the Final Four down in San Antonio? Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell for all things Texas Tech men's basketball all year long right here on the largest group of Texas Tech fans on YouTube, the most watched, the most subscribed to, the most interactive Texas Tech YouTube channel. Of course, I'm talking about the Back to 12 podcast channel.